Remember that time I had an engine failure on the runway? I sure do. And today, I've got some answers for you. In this video, we'll talk about exactly what happened, but I could have done better as a pilot, and the throttle buddy of the Continental IO520. I'm sharing this video today to help other pilots and aircraft owners diagnose a problem like this and be aware of what can go wrong. Just like a car or boat, Aircrafts need maintenance, and lots of it at that. I'm also going to be breaking down the steps it took to overhaul my throttle body, and how much it costs. As much as I love sharing with you all the highlights of my aircraft adventures in Debbie, I think it's also important to share the hardships. When I bought Debbie, I knew I'd be restoring her at the ripe age of 58 years old. And I've been having so much fun learning the ins and outs of a vintage aircraft. Real quick, recently, I received a letter from my healthcare provider informing me of a data breach that included information such as my social security number, not the letter you want to receive while sipping your coffee before a nice sunny day to fly. This year, a number of high profile data breaches raised some serious concerns about personal information security. United Health confirmed that over a hundred million of their users had their data stolen, including myself, the largest healthcare data breach in the US. It has been confirmed that the members of this hacker group have released the sensitive information online for free. Now's the time to take your personal information online seriously. You are more vulnerable than ever in today's digital landscape. That's why I'm so thankful for today's sponsor, Aura. Aura monitors your personal data, including your social security number, across billions of data points like the dark web, and public court records to alert you about potential identity theft. Plus, Aura offers a variety of other features to keep you safe online, including real-time alerts for data breaches, a VPN to secure browsing, data broker opt-out to companies from selling your personal information, a password manager to help you create and store strong passwords, and more. I'm not leaving myself or my family open to data breaches. And if you don't want to either, you can go to Aura.com slash Haley Herberg to try two weeks for free. That will be enough time for Aura to find out if any personal information has been exposed. Link is also in this video's bio below. Now let's finish our coffee in peace knowing our personal information online is safe. And let's continue with today's video. So what is an aircraft's throttle body? I'm not an aircraft mechanic, but this is what I found using the Continental IO520 manuals in the American Bonanza Society training. Simply put, it's the part that controls the fuel to air ratio being sent into the engine. It has two main parts, the throttle body, which controls the internal butterfly flap, and the fuel metering unit that controls the amount of fuel being mixed with the air. The fuel enters this controller through the fuel inlet, first coming through a valve controlled by the mixture setting in the cockpit. At full rich, almost all the fuel flows towards the engine for combustion. A portion of the fuel is sent back through the fuel return line, through the injector pump, and eventually back to the fuel tank. When the mixture is set to idle, all of the fuel is sent back through the return line. When set somewhere in the middle, the selected portion is sent to the engine, while the rest is sent back through the return line. While the throttle controls the amount of induction air admitted to the engine, it has a secondary function in the fuel injection system. After fuel moves through the fuel metering unit, it comes against the throttle valve. When the throttle is fully forward, the butterfly flap is fully open. All fuel after being metered continues through this valve to the engine for combustion. As the throttle is retarded, this closes the butterfly flap, as well as closes the valve for fuel flow. This causes fuel to back up to the fuel metering unit and automatically leans the mixture. There is also an idle setting on the mixture control that allows the correct amount of fuel through the metering unit. So now that we understand how the throttle body works, let's talk about the failure that me and my mechanic found in my throttle body. We turned on the battery as well as the fuel pump to create pressure in the lines. As I moved my throttle and mixture in the cockpit, we found the fuel inlet was leaking generously with every movement. Yikes. However, as soon as we turned the aircraft off, there was no more leak. This made finding the problem pretty tricky. Now from understanding the throttle body, we can also understand why an aircraft may become starved of fuel and stall on rollout at the idle position on the runway. During run up, it's also important to make sure you check your engine at idle. Be more than for two seconds, because if I had done so for more than two seconds, I may have found the problem sooner. After my engine stalled on rollout, I also tried to restart my engine and proceed off the runway. 
On my last video, I had someone leave a helpful comment as to why my battery may have started having issues. My aircraft has a 12 volt battery, which is necessary for things such as avionics, lights, and of course, the starter. I tried to restart the engine while leaving the radio and landing light on as Tower was in the middle of trying to contact me. Both the starter and landing light take a large load from the battery, and therefore, by trying to restart my engine with everything on, I was unable to. In retrospect, I feel it was most likely pilot error for my not being able to restart my engine on the ground after the stall. It's so important to follow checklists while flying an airplane, and I feel if I had just slowed down, took a breath, <laughs> and read my checklist for a hot start, I probably would have been able to restart my engine. So it's important to remember to always follow your checklist, even in high stress environments, like a towered airport with someone on final right after you while talking to the controller <laughs> being stalled at the end of the runway. So in retrospect, I should have asked the tower to turn off everything on my aircraft so I could restart without overloading the battery. Also, anyone who knows the Continental IO520 in the Bonanza knows that those are so hard to start hot. <laughs> so what's next? Well, I decided to overhaul my entire throttle body. This means it was sent back to the manufacturer to inspect clean and repair. This restores the parts performance and efficiency. My throttle body took three weeks for this whole process, making it so I was unable to go on a trip that was planned for three months. We were supposed to go to the Oregon coast. I already knew when I sent out my throttle body that these things usually take longer than guessed, but I was still hoping for the best. <laughs> my throttle body only had 900 hours on it and the TVO, according to manufacturer standards, was 1700 hours. So keep an eye out. Sometimes parts deteriorate faster than their TBO. And this actually depends on the environment maybe the airplane was living in or the way it was used prior. And finally, what some of you have been patiently waiting to hear, this grand venture cost me a total of $1,900, including labor and the overhaul. Airplanes are cheap. <laughs> Though it is a bummer when you miss a trip because of things like maintenance, it's a part of the fun of aviation. I'm excited to have my throttle body back. I'm off to go test fly now. We'll both see you healthy and happy in the next video.